Hi everyone, I'm here with Anna, and uh, we're not talking about the Women's Prize this time. Amazingly. <laughs> so for those of you who might be um, recent to my channel and haven't seen Anna before, this is Anna James, who's a journalist and author, and uh, we regularly make videos about the Women's Prize, and made quite a lot of videos this year about the Women's Prize, <laughs> yeah. uh, but there's so much to say. But yeah, I mean, there really is, because each one, we talk for hours. And every time we think, you know, this one's going to be really short because we just made one two weeks ago. <laughs> but An hour later, we're still talking. Still more to say. <laughs> but yeah, we wanted to make a video today uh, sort of outside of that context uh, to because it's nice to have a chance to talk about other books now because we do read quite a lot of other books um, yeah. other than just uh, books nominated for the Women's Prize. Um, but also wanted to get together today to celebrate Anna's new book. Um, her second book has just been published, uh, Pages & Co, Tilly and, and the, the Lost Fairy, Fairy Tales. Uh, this time Tilly goes to Paris. And also, didn't so did this just come out in America? as well yeah, so the, the first, first book. one oh i should have got that i really love the american cover oh. um but um yeah it just came out 24th of september so america's a year behind right yeah um, so. but it, i got to go and visit some bookstores uh and she was just in stores. america for a little over yeah. a week um and you got to go to paris as well recently didn't you yes for, but this for the coming out here the so book. i feel like yeah. i've had a, an uh, exhausting but jammy kind of month of traveling and I, I i was in victoria station the other day and i saw oh, a poster for um I and i got so excited i was like I haven't it's seen anna in real life <laughs> i've looked for them i've been sent lists but you get told it's like oh houston overflow underpass tunnel and you can't, <laughs> Where is I can't that? work out <laughs> rather where than wandering are. through all of the station yeah <laughs> <sighs> but one day i will see one if i see it again i'll take a picture Thank and send it to you yeah. and if yeah i would i would really appreciate pictures if you do see one they're on stations around like national rail stations as well so please do send me a picture if you see one so um, cool i'm yet to find one yeah. <laughs> um and also if you'll permit me a moment of um self promotion more so than that was um the first book is also on the books of my bag readers awards uh which yes, is this which uh both brought as yeah our new books of my bag um really beautiful new yeah. uh books of my bag uh tote bags and uh, and i talked about this recently in a video talking about the poetry shortlist mm -hmm. for the books of my bag awards and uh so i'll put a link down below to because it's a public vote the the public get to vote for the winners and the um <laughs> the books are nominated by booksellers yes. so it's a like lovely compliment it that, is. Uh, i'm i'm hugely grateful to the booksellers who put it on the shortlist and um I would be hugely grateful if you fancied voting for pages in the children's category. Although I find it so, I also want to just be like, go and vote for whatever, like go and vote for whatever your favourite <laughs> books are. Like the point of it is, like it always feels like a weird balance of like, I would be super <laughs> grateful if you did vote for pages, but I also like vote for the books. Yeah. That you like the best. Like <laughs> it's lovely being on the shortlist, and I'm on the shortlist with friends who I would be delighted to see win as well. So like it's, yeah, vote. Go and vote. <laughs> yeah. And there's lots of categories. Um, like I said, yes. the poetry category yeah. and novel category. Um, and uh, but I, I will say you you have to be in the UK or Ireland oh, yeah. in order to vote. Um, but if you do vote, you have a mm. chance to win book tokens. So there's a good incentive. Yeah. yeah, it's a yeah good thing. So um so yeah, I'll put a link down to that below. And uh, but uh, but what we want to talk about today is uh, book recommendations. Um, sort of book books. Uh, we're each going to recommend three books, three books a piece uh, that we just, uh, these are books we really like and we want to recommend to everybody, but specifically we're yeah. recommending them to each other and we don't know what each other's choices are. Uh, so this will be a fun sort of yeah. game where we can do, um, we each have three books in our bags that we're going <laughs> to reveal to the other one and uh, and uh, yeah, see if, because um, it's, it's sort of a gamble because I don't know if Anna has read any of these yeah. books that I've picked and... Uh, or yeah. if she'll like any of them or, or and yeah. i just right i was just when eric arrived i was like i had taken because i was gonna put this one in pages uh pages for you which is one i've been wanting to read but, but i was I so read convinced yet. you would have read it that i didn't include it and i'm gutted that i didn't mm. so uh this is my like unofficial <laughs> fourth okay to start? i'm gonna go i'm gonna go you first start. okay this is, this is fun <laughs> okay um right i have got I've just realised that none of them are like adult novels. Oh, okay. 
but that's fine. So let's start with the children's book. Okay. Because you don't read a great deal of children's fiction, okay. being an adult who doesn't work <laughs> professionally in children's fiction, as much as I obviously believe that, yes, as in that's not a judgment. But I do also believe that good children's books can be read and enjoyed by anyone. So I wanted to include a children's book. And the one I've picked is Momo by Michael End. Oh, I don't think I've ever okay, heard of good. that. Wow. Um, he wrote The Neverending Story. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. But this book is just not so well known. Hmm. Um, I also like that um, it really kind of mirrors the, the pages covers, which is a complete, it does, yeah. complete coincidence. <laughs> um, the, the paperback mm. is with the circles and the red. Um, mm. <laughs> so this was originally published in German, uh, and he's a German author. And this is about, it's about like storytelling and the power of storytelling and also about like time and the idea of wasting time and what constitutes wasting time. And it's kind of trippy mm. at the end. Um, the, the villains in it really inspired my villain in uh, oh, okay. in pages well not really inspired as in they both wear bowler hats that's like but that's, <laughs> it's a nod to this yeah. um and it's one of my all-time favorite books hmm. um it's yeah i would have this in my top five of all time it's a book wow. that meant a huge amount to me as a child my dad gave me not this copy i've got a very i should have put it i should have brought it to put on camera but i've got a very precious copy that you can't take away with you um <laughs> that this is the one i have to lend to people okay um yeah. but my dad That's read smart. it when he <laughs> was <laughs> little yeah it's like it's printed in brown ink it's really beautiful huh. um yeah. but my dad gave it to me when uh, he so he had read it he gave it to me when i was a kid and i stole that copy uh and i love it and i think it's beautiful and i am on a one woman mission to get more people to read it because I think yeah, that yeah. it's a really special, timeless, and I do think it's an ageless book. Hmm. It's technically a children's novel, but it's got that timeless quality that the best, well, the best children's fiction I've ever read of all, of all fiction has. So hmm. that's number one. Okay. Momo by Michael. It's sometimes published as The Grey Gentleman. My old copy huh. is called The Grey Gentleman. Okay. Uh, but so they're different translations, or is that like I an American UK do thing? No, but it's consistently called Momo here mm -hmm. um, but mm. The Grey Gentleman it's the same book it's exactly the same book so there you go and did you read The Never Ending Story as well when no. you were young <laughs> okay so it just happened to be that that's and I only happened. put those two together um, but because I The Never Ending Story the film I really didn't like it as a child oh really oh. Um, I think it's probably one of the ones I maybe watched too young okay, I found yeah. it like a strange mix of terrifying and boring um, huh. like all okay. the like brown like fog and swamps that's in my head yeah. i may be misremembering i love completely. to try you <laughs> uh, no but i realized that i'm in the minority and i think it's probably one of those films that it's just that i didn't i was too old too young to whatever and i just didn't right. come to okay, it but yeah. it um so that's why i didn't read the Fair book enough, right? and this has also got a nice little this is a chris vidal illustration ah. uh, on the cover but i just think it's such a wonderful book and that chris vidal who is shortlisted for the poetry category of oh. the Books in my bag rewards. Everything ties together. Ties together. <laughs> yeah. So that's my cool. first choice for you. Nice. Thank you. Okay. What's in my bag? I'm excited. <laughs> so I am um, going to suggest for you three books by Joyce Carol Oates. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised. One of them. <laughs> it's one of them, Joyce Carol Oates. Actually, it's not. No. <laughs> I was tempted. I probably should have, but, uh, but no. Um, <laughs> Now, the first book I'm going to suggest to you is Jean Rhys, Good Morning Midnight. I have not read it. Okay. I've never read Jean Rhys. Okay. This novel is set in Paris. Um, so uh -huh. I thought it would nicely uh -huh. tie in with Anna's new book. Um, but this is a story which Tilly would not want to enter. Okay. Um, okay. It's, it's a much more adult story. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Jean, Jean Rhys is an interesting author. I was talking about her recently. I made a video about my favorite authors recently, um, one of which I listed as Jean Rhys. Um, but she, she's a very interesting, odd author, especially how she published four novels in the 1930s. Um, this was one of them, mm -hmm. and then didn't publish anything again for almost oh, 20 years oh, until okay. Wide Sargasso Sea was published mm -hmm. and um, sort of brought her back which in the public I attention. That, I haven't read that either. Um, I, I actually prefer her earlier novels oh, to Wide Sargasso Sea. Okay. I know, um, yeah, that's the one that everyone 
it goes to first um, because of the connection to Jane Eyre mm -hmm. and all that. And uh, and but um, but yeah, I, I think her earlier novels they have this sort of melancholy beauty to them. They they are <laughs> about quite depressing subject matter in that the it's uh, the the woman at the center of this novel is someone who spends a lot of time in Paris bars drinking a lot and every once in a while going to to the toilet to have a cry um, but um and so okay. she's sort of reflecting on her life but but i think there's just this sort of beautiful boldness to her writing and the the reason i was sort of thinking of wreck this is a very tenuous connection but i was sort of thinking of her as sort of a heroine kind of like uh the portable beblin or oh, okay. the idiot Which, i mean yeah. it's it's a much less comic novel than than Elizabeth Mackenzie or yeah. Edith Battenen but um but as as a as a female character who has a very strong individual identity which um really isn't that feminist uh but who has a really interesting okay. point of view that I still think shouldn't be discounted and um yeah, interesting so. <laughs> no it's funny when I was looking at my shelves as well I was like oh I thought that was good and then I was there was a couple I discounted because I was like the two because you, you didn't get on with the idiots quite as well as I did. Yeah. Uh, and there's a few that I discounted because I thought they were too similar mm. um, to that. So, okay. okay cool. Interesting. Wow, we're doing well so okay. far then. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the next one is a book of short stories. Okay. Which I don't know if you... This is the one I'm most... I've, um, what it means when I've I'm not out. read that, no, oh! but I've seen it okay, um, so this before. Is it, yeah. What it means when a man falls from the sky by Leslie Nyeke Arena. Which That's a beautiful is, cover. Yes. This is, I think, maybe the only collection of short stories I've read where I didn't think there was a dud in there. Not a dud is a very strong word, but, you know, one yeah. of the perils of collections of short stories Absolutely. is that some of them you're going to like more than others. And equally, obviously, I think some of them are strong, but it's all on a scale, for me, of good to great. Mm. I went through a period of just not really reading short stories because I'd had a bad, I just, I'd read a couple of collections and I just didn't like them and I found them pretentious and silly. Uh, and I think that that's another thing that short stories can fall into, sort of style mm. over substance. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say which one, but I read <laughs> a collection of short stories that I despised so much it put me off short stories for a year or two. Wow. Gosh. And then I read this one, <laughs> and um, I just thought it was brilliant. Hmm. Um, there's a real mix of, some of it is, it's mainly kind of realism, contemporary, but there's some magical realism in there. And it, it was one of, which, what year did it, it wasn't last year, was it, it was a year before. Yeah, I think two years ago. Or so, and it was, yeah. but I had it on my, uh, my best of the list. I just looked at this and realised it's signed and how funny it was. So I met her, <laughs> and then um, we were um, talking about when you're a writer, you're working on something and then it feels like every book that's announced is about the same thing that you're writing about. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we're talking about how it always seems to happen. And then I've just read she's put to Anna, my next book is about a magical bookshop, may the best woman win. And she's drawn a little drawing. Uh, man falling from the sky. She was brilliant. Um, and it was <laughs> great to meet her. So yeah, they're real, they're just really good. And it really restored my faith in short story collections. Hmm. Um, and it would be one of those collections that I would, um, you know, recommend to someone who said that they weren't. It's one that I think would convert people. And some of the stories are so good, like mm. properly, perfectly formed short stories. And they have that really good mix of like, you know, style, but they're also just enjoyable stories. Um, mm. Is it her first book? I think maybe the first book published in the UK. Mm, right, um, yeah. But they're just so <clears throat> human and smart and beautiful and some of them are heartbreaking and mm. I just think it shows what a good collection of shorts like what's really up there what a good collection of short stories can do cool so oh, I've been really bad with um I, I generally read a lot more short stories but um but this year for some reason I've just not read that that many um I keep meaning to so yes yeah, this is well, a good prompt there we go there's one so the next book is the revolution of the moon haven't read it haven't heard of andrea it andrea camilleri oh, okay good i mean that looks obscure yeah well it um <laughs> it's uh, it's published by europa it came oh, out that, a couple okay, years ago okay. and um but yeah i i read this and loved it and but yeah i didn't i didn't i don't 
think I saw anybody else talking mm-hmm. about it, um, which was a shame because, because uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this. So I picked this because uh, the subject matter slightly reminded me of Margaret the First by Daniel Dutton, oh, which, which Anna is, loves. I love that book. Yeah, <laughs> and um, only in that the it's a connection. It's sort of um, about a. Uh, obscure woman from history who was really quite extraordinary um but um and so this is a novel about her life so it's about a uh, woman who uh called donna eleonora who became the viceroy of sicily in 1677 um after her husband died who was the viceroy and at that time um which i didn't even realize uh sicily was under spanish rule um and uh and so she um yeah became the ruler of sicily basically uh, but only for 27 days because she entered into this politics filled with a lot of corrupt politicians and members of the clergy. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, uh, and she was somebody who tried to enact a lot of social reform um, and was, was uh, trying to uh, introduce these laws um, for, uh, to, to improve the conditions of the, mm-hmm. the working class in Sicily and, uh, and, and also to hunt out um, corrupt politicians and prosecute them and um and so obviously a lot of the powers that be uh didn't like that at the time and uh and uh so yeah there was a lot of um pressure on her and obviously her being a woman um was mm-hmm. uh counted very badly against her at the time and uh and uh but but it's so interesting the way he writes this story and actually sadly the author died this past mm-hmm. summer um he's italian and he um he's mainly famous for writing a detective oh, series a okay. string of detective books in italy um, but he did write some historical novels as well including this but he mainly focuses on the perspective of those politicians and members of the clergy and other mm-hmm. people uh, and it's sort of almost as a as a satire because it shows just their their absolute um fear and cowardliness as mm-hmm. they're trying to shore up their power against okay. this this woman who is trying to introduce all these these new rules and um so uh, yeah she sort of looms in the background as this very <laughs> powerful figure with a lot of conviction in um her her vision of 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 how she wants to run the country but yeah the the difficulty she mm. comes across doing that so yeah i, Ooh, thought I feel like you're doing a much better job of articulating <laughs> why you picked them i feel like i um <laughs> was going really on like gut like I just literally went through all my bookshelves and I pulled pulled out lo- uh, maybe like twelve like? <laughs> books that I was just like I think you'd like it. No, but that's fair enough. <laughs> and um, yeah, and obviously, yeah, this just uh, like I said, like I didn't, haven't heard a lot of people talking about this, so I just mm. like to hear more people discussing no, it. So um, so yeah, and it's you know a nice yeah. tribute since the author died recently. So. Yeah, and I you know forgotten women histor- I love historical good historical fiction, so mm. good pick. Okay, yeah. my last pick is a book of essays okay who you definitely if you know the author and i'm sure have read some of her other work but i'm not sure whether you've read this mm. so it's mary oliver's book of essays upstream i have not read it no okay but i have yeah, seen it and was aware of it yeah so mary oliver another beautiful cover <laughs> yes it really is and this is not i had to get this from the u.s um huh. Yeah. Where, is a, because Mary Oliver is so much more well known and widely read in the US. She, mm-hmm. well, I don't know if you, I would, is that, that's fair to say, isn't she? I would say she's yeah, sort of yeah. seen us, it's like Carol Ann Duffy is here maybe, that like read a lot in schools. Mm-hmm. And I complete, like stumbled across her a couple of years ago completely serendipitously. And again, I am not generally a big believer in like ideas to do with like fate and then anything like that but i once someone once someone said about mary oliver that you find mary oliver when you most need her and like Hmm. i stumbled across a quote from one of her poems on instagram literally when i was going through a really like a really bad time and it really helped me crystallize how i felt and what i should do and i know lots of other people who've had that experience wow. mm. um so she's a poet but yes yeah, so these are her essays mm. so I, well i picked this because i feel like you like again this is so much like i'm struggling to think of examples but i see you <laughs> as someone who likes kind of like lyrical like non-fiction that sort of reads almost like prose yeah also it's a lot about nature okay. mm-hmm. 
Uh, and it's also a lot about like the creative spirit and feeling drawn to being a creative person and negotiating life and art and identity. Um, hmm. Also, they're just really good. Hmm. Like, I feel like I might have a... I don't know how much I've underlined. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. is there like... Yeah. There are... Um, there are bits which probably will... Uh, it's also, it's funny, isn't it? Because when you read something... That's a lot like, underlined. Um, <laughs> it says a lot of, I think, probably where you were, where you were at psychologically when you read it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But there's just a lot about... I think I'd really recommend it to anyone who loves words and loves reading and loves writing. It, it, she writes so beautifully and simply about the power of language and of words hmm. in in your life and i feel like you are you know someone who I'd believes that. in that <laughs> so um yeah and i it's just i just love her and i love these essays mm. very much and it's fair because yeah i've never read her or her poetry um though i know that you you loved it so um mm. so i'd been meaning to but yeah okay um, so yeah actually the It'd be, yeah, it would be interesting for us to read, yeah, her essays right. and then to go to her poetry afterwards. I just, uh, yeah, I think that she's such a, she just writes so simply but so powerfully. And the essays are just, she's so good on, like, why writing and reading matters. So, Brilliant. that's my third pick. <laughs> no, great. And all, yeah, three I have not read. Which so. is a well good done. start, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm quite proud of this one, um, <laughs> okay. I think, although maybe you have read it, um, but it's the Victorian Chaise Long no. uh, by Marganita Lasky. And that's um, a, Persef a lovely Persephone edition. Yes, uh, so it's in this, uh, if you don't know, um, Persephone is a wonderful uh, small press um, that, that publishes mainly books by women and they have a lovely bookshop in London and all of their editions are in these lovely dove grey uh, colors and um, and yeah and, they ma and mainly publish uh, female authors from the uh, the 1900s mm -hmm. who have sort of gone out of print and so this novel uh, the Victorian Chaise Long was first published in 1953 okay and I'm recommending it to you because uh, you loved Sandra Newman's The Heavens so much I did and this story is uh, I I sort of as I was going back over it and th and thinking like what was the plot again and it's yeah. like oh yeah and actually the plot mirrors it quite uh, a lot or Ooh. or, or in, in there's a very similar idea behind all of it so it's about a woman in the 1950s mm -hmm. uh who is uh is is sick and she's um she's she's resting at home and but she's well enough to go recline on her chaise long and uh, and to have a view of uh, the garden and um and she's quite a spoiled selfish type woman um in her attitude and manner and so she falls asleep on the chaise mm -hmm. long and she wakes up in uh, the Victorian era, in the 1800s, I'm and so sold. in the body <laughs> of a Victorian woman, of another okay. woman, and um, and weirdly there, so like she's still herself, but she has the memories and slight oh, so consciousness of just like the heavens. Yeah, so it is really just like the so heavens. So interesting to know if Sandra Newman had read this. Yeah, yeah, I'm really curious now too, and I wish I'd asked her when you did the mm. Lush book club with her um, if she had heard of this novel because yeah, it's such a innovative idea and and yeah. And, uh, and yeah Ooh. i don't know if this was the example she was thinking of um but but yeah so and so she um going back in time like this uh she's sort of suddenly confronted by how uh at the the time women had a lot less rights and mm -hmm. um there were expectations and and um and restrictions on how women could express themselves and um and so it's it's this sort of jolting into uh realization about mm. the the importance of history and and thinking about our moral responsibilities and um and yeah, and how the the past shapes the present and the future and um so so yeah and so it deals with a lot of i think the same issues that Sandra Newman um mm. approached in her novel as well but sort of obviously yeah. from a slightly different way and the heavens is my book of the year thus far <laughs> and i will be my book of the year so mm great so yeah so okay. that's why i'm very proud of it so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, do what are we gonna do then are we gonna read all three or we're gonna pick one or two or how do you want to do it because we'll whatever we do we're gonna read and then report back yeah they're all 
all three of them are ones I'm Which really is interested the one in. Which one that you're most drawn to? And I think probably the one that's like most in my comfort zone would probably be the short stories mm -hmm. uh, that I would immediately be drawn to. But um, I feel like in trying to pick things that you haven't read, I've gone as in. As in, I tried to pick, because I know you don't read a lot of children's books, but I tried to pick a children's book that I thought that you would really like. Mm. So I want you to read this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm sure I'll enjoy the experience. And, well, and it's a children's book, so it's like, it's not, it won't take me a huge amount of no. time to read it, will you? Um, and, yeah, and I tried to pick fairly shortish books, too, yeah. so there'd be a more realistic chance that you could read them all if you want to. Uh, okay, so we're going to swap all of them yeah. and see how we and I think go. There's, there's like no obligations to read them all, but no. um, but yeah, but okay. then we'll get together again and uh, and check in on our progress and how we how we felt about them. Mm. And... Okay, <laughs> there you go. Thanks. There you go. Okay, cool. Do you know what? Normally as well, <laughs> I wouldn't book. lend a signed book to somebody, but I trust you. Yeah, I, I take care <laughs> with my books. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> there are definitely some people I wouldn't. Yeah, la largely <laughs> it's just a bl my blanket rule is if it's not signed or pressed then I don't mind if somebody reads it and within reason it looks like it's been read you know like don't take the mic but I, it means that I have like lending copies of some books mm. um, there's a few books that I really love that I have my sort of signed or signed pressure dis precious edition and then I have a paperback that, you, yeah. that I can uh, lend people yeah they get beaten up yeah no yeah. that is, that is a really clever uh thing yeah to do um yeah and i i told the story recently to you about how my um lent a, a sign one of my signed books to my partner and he uh he's he's not as careful with books as, <laughs> as i am like really not as careful and so yeah. he ended up um accidentally dropping this signed book on the tube tracks uh so it was lost oh, no. <laughs> just like I'm never lending you a no, precious I book mean, again. <laughs> of, so many of the paperbacks I have were so that so my boyfriend can read them because yeah. he's not careless. He just reads books properly. Like he he reads them very physically. Like he hmm. will like he'll read them like this the spine. and like this, yeah. which is <laughs> fine. But I was like, uh, so he just read he when read Station Eleven book, earlier, then, and I have a signed uh, first edition that came with the kind of graphic novel page that they did with the first editions and it's also white uh, mm. so I was like you just you, I'm okay. gonna just get you a paperback <laughs> of this because and it is wrecked as in it's just been read but I would rather just be like do you know what just buy a six nine nine paperback that you, I cannot worry at all about so That's good advice well I'll put them in the canvas bag copies. so they'll stay they'll stay nice um, and, and good yes. <laughs> Um, Great. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. So. Yeah. I don't know when we'll do a video again. But yeah. Yeah. Maybe in December or January or something. Or yeah. Of time. Yeah. It depends on. We'll probably. We will keep in touch about how we're going and what we're thinking. I'm always interested in what people recommend because, you know, I think when you're a big reader, often people, my like friends who aren't to do with books, just never will recommend or buy me books, which I yeah. encourage to be perfectly honest. Like. Because um, <laughs> yeah. And it can be a bit awkward. Yeah, so it's interesting. I'm always open for recommendations, though. So I feel like if you feel like you have got a grasp of my taste from watching our videos, yeah, I was going to say if if you want to know. recommend a book to us, having yes. seen our videos and, and the yeah. kind of the books we we tend to go for, yeah. um, yeah, let us know in the comments below if yeah, there's for one in sure. particular. I go for. I'm going to just because I'm probably the kind of less frequent guest. I like. I will if you can recommend me something that I'm going to love. I would. I'm just very happy. So I like things I like, but it doesn't have to be all of them. I like historical fiction. I like literary historical fiction. I like magical realism. I like things that are playful in structure and form without being pretentious. Mm -hmm. That's like my sweet spot. Which can be a um, fine line sometimes, yeah. <laughs> like Ali Smith, like Margaret the First, Virginia mm. Woolf, things that are structurally playful, but still a really good read. That's my optimum kind of reading window. I have a fairly high tolerance for whimsy. Yes, recommend me something. Yeah, let yeah. us know in the comments below, and uh, yeah, and we'll check in again um, at some point soon. At some point. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you, Anna. Yay. Cool. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>